So my next question is uh, basically uh, about the inclusive growth, uh, where all these tenders are going to come out, and you know the big uh, developers are going to participate. It may be a solar park uh, tender, or it may be uh, different where you can uh, different model where you choose your land parcel and then nominate that land parcel for your solar project and uh, bid. Uh, this question is about the RPO. Whether you are going to you think opening up this market for the captive consumptions or people who want to uh, put in a solar power uh, project and want to sell off that energy to smaller players, uh, whereby uh, completing their RPO obligation. Uh, is, is that going to really uh, balloon this uh, solar market apart from the big developers into the the common folks who are there in Tamil Nadu and want to consume rather than a diesel generated from a diesel generated source from a solar. Uh, do you think that market opening up because up till now it hasn't and Karnataka has uh, to a certain extent done a lot of work on, on that whereby they have given certain subsidies on the wheeling and banking. So do you think that is uh, also a very good uh, in the next step for uh, Tanjat or Tamil Nadu to foray into? This, uh, this way of exploring inclusiveness. Uh, right now, we are also that the farmers thing. Also, somebody was asking uh, net metering for the farmers. Maybe all these things uh, can be looked into. We have subsidies for uh, solar pumps. Uh, the far, far, the, what else you have? Captive will be permitted, but uh, today we have. No, so, so basically what I want to ask, uh, right now we haven't seen a lot of interest from the captive consumer market uh, putting up solar. They don't see that viability or they see a lot of, let's say, uh, problems in the way of getting that open access That's license. Banking is what they request for, right. which the Minister Absolutely. also mentioned that right. uh, we will uh, think and take it up with the regulator. Okay. okay. So your view on this, Narasimha sir? Banking for the farmer's production. Oh, General. Captive. Yeah, that's what I was telling energy storage. Am I right? It's a storage one part. But mm. uh, whereby even uh, right now there is one month banking facility that can be done. Yeah, that's what Minister was answering. They are under the serious consideration to implement the banking. We will also impress and influence them to come out with their solution shortly. And uh, thanks for the ideas, whatever you have given for banking and whoever raised the question banking for the farmers production yes farmers to be given the priority under banking also the farmers policies and the farmer solar generation has to be strengthened there is no doubt we will all work together to evolve some kind of policy for the banking we will put up our opinion to the government all right thank you very much sir for that answer uh, my next question is basically on challenges the challenges faced by developers and challenges faced by the EBC companies, may it be rooftop or may it be ground mounted for the bigger projects. So uh, let me pose that question to Mr. Um, uh, to Bosch. And uh, uh, if you can answer, do you see the market feasible for doing uh, uh, a smooth sale EPC or even for a developer's perspective if you have any any view you can add. Okay. Um, like what Mr. Narsimhan was talking about um, today, if you look at the overall solar segment as such, uh, we are going through a very challenging times. Uh, with the CBD of 8.2% coming in with the safeguard duty, nobody knows when the safeguard duty is going to come or if it's going to come, what percentage it's going to be. So it definitely affects um, for any kind of uh, offer which you make. Uh, to your prospective customers. Having said that, uh, what we have seen in the last one and a half years time is that there's a lot of challenges which is always always happening. The module price increasing, the Doklam issue coming up. There are so many factors which is never in the control of uh, any EPC player or the industry as such. There are totally a lot of external issues which are there, government related policy issues and that's the way it's going to be for a sunrise segment like uh, solar. 
so one of the challenges which an EPC company or an industry or anybody in the solar segment will have to take. For example, what we do is that when we make an offer to the customer, we tell them very clearly that CBD duty or safe, safeguard duty is to the account of the customer when it comes. So we make an offer to them. But we do not stop making offers because the wheel has to move. You have to close deals. And we have closed a lot, even in such kind of turbulent times. We have made uh, closures with orders, etc. in the last 15 days, in the last one month as well. Uh, but these are the challenges what you need to explain to the customers. Mostly commercial and industrial space customers are aware of it. So they do understand the challenges and they are ready to accept it. But when it comes to long-term PPAs, etc., cetera, uh, that it is going to be a challenge because then uh, there is a particular tariff rate which the industry would have expected and then if it is going to go shoot over that, then uh, they would definitely wait for such a kind of addition. So there is a certain wait and watch attitude which we find with some customers, but there are customers who are really interested, for example, in Karnataka, there is a policy which is there where you need to close before March uh, to get uh, to avoid the cross uh, subsidy. As a result of which, a lot of industries are closing as fast as possible. They are ready to take the chance. But whereas in other places, probably in Maharashtra or other places, yes, there is, there is a certain amount of wait and watch attitude as well. Uh, that's, that's one part of it. The second part of it which I see is that what um, Mr. Narsimhan was once again talking about whether the Indian manufacturing uh, industry has got the capability to manufacture and deliver the kind of quantities. Apart from that, you see most Indian manufacturers are also set up their own EPC companies. It could be Adani, it could be Vikram, it could be Wari. They have all their own arms of uh, this thing. Where what I see in future is for a pure EPC player or for a pure turnkey solution provider, um, how is he going to compete with a module manufacturer who has got a significant advantage uh, when it comes to manufacturing and the kind of um, uh, margins which he has got where he goes in on the other side and starts competing on projects. That is going to be a far bigger challenge, challenges for companies like Sterling Wilson, it could be companies like LNT, Mahindra, etc. That's a very, very significant challenge. So on one hand, you close down the, you know, uh, you bring in entry barriers on an industry which has got very, very low entry barriers and on an industry where margins are very, very low. So you have to get into projects, you have to ensure that you have to be very operationally, operational excellence has to be there. Your uh, project management excellence has to be there and you have to deliver projects at a very fast pace and your cost of finance has to also be lower. That's when your companies will start making money. Well, earlier, about three years back or four years back, a uh, lot of people made money in this industry. But today, uh, the challenge is whether they are making money. Having said that, the third part is that the kind of installations which has happened across the place, if you look at the March 2017 uh, the Bridge to India survey, anyone, uh, Mr. Piyush Goel brought in this, that at least 60% of the installations which has been done in the country are whether they are up to the mark in terms of quality of installation. Because today it is, people are talking about for the next 25 years, it's the question of PPAs which are going to be there. So with so many people, with such low entry barriers, people coming into EPC contractors coming in all around the place, quality is another challenge, big challenge which all of us will face. Uh, whether that installation will last for 25 years, whether it will give the kind of return on investments uh, for the investor. This is a far bigger challenge because one of the points which Narsiman, Mr. Narsiman brought out was that the kind of finances it needs to come because this is the oil for moving this industry. So it's very important that the industry, the EPC players, as well as the people in the solar segment have this very, very strong focus on establishing quality installations in such a way that it gives a return on investment. So I foresee these kind of challenges that there are, of course, net metering policies. There are various different net metering policies across different states. Each one is different. But what I find is that um, uh, this is where I think the government has to come in, pitch in, the government of India as well, uh, to ensure that net metering policies are harmonized across various states so that it benefits the, uh, you know, it brings in a lot of uh, momentum for the rooftop industry because ultimately end of the day it's a rooftop industry which has to grow in a far bigger way in india it is about rooftop is about segment is only about 10 percent probably but if you look at uh, the world as such in developed countries rooftop will be about 70 percent compared to the utility market as such so i find that these are the challenges which are there because over a period of time you will find that rooftop is what will be sustainable uh, in the commercial industrial space as well as in the residential segment these are some of the challenges which i see 
Um, thanks for your answer. Uh, if I can throw the same question to you, Raju Gopal, and if you can also add to it uh, as an EPC, if it's easier in the Tamil Nadu perspective to get all the clearances uh, and the approvals from the, the government agencies when you're doing a project. Uh, we are startup players in this uh, business, CPG business. So, uh, whatever it is, uh, now uh, what we have observed, what I have observed uh, in my uh, stint with uh, solar business is that, you know, the policy, solar policy is not very clear in Tamil Nadu. Uh, we know very well that the landscape is changing very fast in solar. It is following the path of uh, mobile business you know, where uh, the landscape and the business scape is changing very quickly by the day. So, the policy by uh, the government, uh, it's, it's a request to Geeta ma'am, that we need to keep changing the policy according to the times. So, solar policy needs to be updated quite constantly. Uh, that is my request. So, which would give a clear cut direction, guide map to the players and uh, they can take strategic decisions according to in align I mean uh, in tune with the policies of the state. So that is one thing and the second uh, looking at uh, the you know uh, uh, macro at macro level uh, now you know e I, government of India has announced uh, you know EVs electrical vehicles by 2030. So we can expect a huge spike in the you know, uh, I mean, uh, consumption very soon. And uh, Bangalore and uh, Delhi have taken very good, uh, you know, initiatives in EV charging stations. And uh, I, I don't see any policy or any uh, initiatives from the Tamil Nadu government for setting up the charging stations for EV cars. It is backward engineering. So when they start, uh, you know, installing the charging stations, you know, the cars come into the road and the consumption, you know, goes up, uh, which would indirectly help the renewable energy players to, you know, increase the capacity and setting up more and more capacity. So, I would request uh, Geeta ma'am on these two counts to, you know, uh, give us the uh, solution about the policy number one and about the uh, roadmap for charging, setting up the charging stations all over. Thank you. Policy was given in 2012, but uh, now subsequently commission is giving coming out with renewal obligations, purchase obligations. So automatically it is uh, inbuilt now by the uh, regulators intervention. Whole country's targets are fixed by the government, so automatically it is updated. Anyway, we'll take that into consideration. We'll see whether 2012 policy can be updated. Uh, and given that is one thing and the EV side we are also doing some R&D along with the NLC it's working we are working on that and uh, this EV along with battery storage uh, is the future because in our grid this when solar is uh, the in, uh, integration of solar into grid is a big challenge See, by uh, 6 o'clock uh, it becomes zero today we have 1865 megawatt but 6 o'clock I will have uh, dip in my grid by 1865 megawatts. So, unless this battery storage picks up, it is going to be a huge challenge, challenge for the uh, state utility. We are also coming out the pumped storage uh, that is also being explored and uh, we will be sh shortly coming out the Kunda pump storage 500 megawatt capacity. So, from our side, uh, we are into it. We are uh, taking all steps. <coughs> this is the right, <coughs> right question raised by Mr. Rajagopal. You are right, today 85 charging stations are getting inaugurated in Bangalore. This is a policy was prepared by including the best come. You are aware of that. So like that, uh, I also insist the Tamil Nadu government to have a clarity on bringing a policy on EVs and charging stations. Unless until you have an electrical vehicle, car or bus, there is no need for charging stations. So, the first, these people have to come forward a policy. Karnataka government already rolled out a policy for EV and ESS, followed by other states. Telangana is working. Next month, they are going to release a policy. Mr. Ajayopal, uh, you and me and our friends, 
we can sit upon the government of tamil nadu that's what i mentioned in the speech ford car is manufactured here nissan is manufactured here all ashok leyland is here we have got various uh, four wheeler manufacturers as a automotive hub of tamil nadu unfortunately the rulers they have to think on this which is not happening today as i told the minister is not there i am talking openly we should think what is the vision of india what is the vision of our government one day minister said that he is going to buy 60 he is going to implement a 60 buses with ev ashok leyland after a week they said that it may not happen so easily it may take some time recently you could have seen that the tvs has come out with the new bikes at a higher cost now for information tvs themselves they are working to go for a lithium ion battery to implement in the two wheelers which is manufactured in my constituency osur so they are also going for a lithium ion battery for the electrical vehicle for two wheelers so it will take some more time my dear friend mr rajagopal tamil nadu we are behind karnataka and andhra in this all we together we will accept this debacle we will work for the success thank you okay thank you so much uh, ma'am and sir uh, my next question brings uh, me to the scheduling and forecasting question uh, that is relevant to renewable energy especially wind and solar uh, so i would like to first know whether the government is doing anything on it or uh, uh, so one is obviously the storage solution which is easier i mean uh, another view is that you can also do a lot of uh, smoothening of the the solar curve i'm not talking about the wind using a tracker alone i mean you will have a dip in your generation annual generation which can smoothen out by changing the tilt of the tracker so that can also be one of the solutions to just kick start this and then obviously the energy storage will come in at a time and you know make it all more viable so right now there is a lot of talk in uh, internationally as well on the the flow batteries for grid management the large scale uh, big scale flow batteries uh, obviously tesla is doing its own thing and so so what is your view is something because i'm asking this question because it's more relevant to tamil nadu than any other state in india as of now Uh, we have close to 30 gigawatt of installed capacity and our renewable penetration into the grid is close to 15% uh, 1 or 2% here or there uh, so it's more relevant as we grow uh, move forward in future with more and more renewable injecting into the into the system so your take ma'am and so you can also add or anyone can add it's rightly said it's a great challenge for us uh, to integrate this renewable power into the grid and uh, being wind is the most uh, most challenging because it has intraday variations also at least solar to some extent it is firm so the, we have challenges and we, this is being addressed uh, separately by the sldc wing of uh, tangentco uh, we are continuously doing some uh, today we are surplus and uh, we are forced to back down our own uh, conventional base load stations to accommodate this renewable power today anyone else who wants to add to that to that answer all right uh, yeah so um, i think we're pretty much done with all my questions so i'll just open up the the debate to to all of you and then if we can have questions from the audience the most welcome Good morning. My name is Kumar from BRM Energy. We are a EPC player. Uh, Adam, I would like to ask a few questions. Adam, regarding that RPO obligations and SPO obligations were implemented in the year 2012. If we would have, if we would have make it strict, no, and what would have happened is all the industries would have. I have to come for solar, but what happened that after the slackness in last maybe that two uh, three years. are implementing that spo obligations especially so so nobody has implemented that spo obligations no madam so because of that what happened the, the industries are not taking solar in a very serious manner so only those industry who are want to enjoy the luxury benefits are enjoying into are entering into solar but it's not become that essential power 
also that is one yes. that is maybe you can uh, see uh, you know the costs of solar before and thanks to the falling prices today people are coming so it was uh, economically not viable for anyone earlier so from uh, now onwards i don't think it's uh, now it is uh, lesser than even conventional power madam we have installed a plant so which from which we are getting a uh, generate uh, we are getting that 18 rupees what if paisa scheme uh, under the national mission has one but now i have seen that from 1845 it has come down to 2 rupees 50 paisa madam at least now this is the right time you can we have to start implementing the scheme okay thanks it is there in the uh, it's a regulators uh, thing and uh, nobody can escape henceforth that is one thing uh, there is a challenge in the court uh, april set aside the tn s order so we can't implement the spo okay so and one more question madam 18.5 uh, 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 national mission power is being supplied adu vandittirk madam adu one problem illa idu na kekkuradha adutha idu okay the next this one madam uh, i will making agreement no madam Uh, i should put the solar plant is a it should run must run plant if you would have put that is as you said now frequency is above 50 50 or 51 so naturally you you will ask the wind mill and solar to shut down then the man who invested such uh, at much money in solar so we have to protect the interest when uh, whenever there is availability of solar it has to be put into the put into For, the grid uh, under merit order we don't uh, back down your plants we in fact back down our own plants uh, this happens only when there is a injury to the grid when there is a threat to the grid sometimes it happens thank you very much uh, it was uh, really a very very enlightening panel discussion and i think broadly we covered all the points related to i think we in the interest of time we have to move forward uh, our agenda is running late and we got a big agenda to go forward so i like to take this opportunity uh, to give a small memento and i'll request ma'am geeta uh, from uh, who's manager projects from tangentco to present small mementos to all the fellow panelists please